Yuzi reincarnates into the world of mutant beats as a tree and aims to defeat all monsters to conquer the world. It all starts with a surge of lightning and a deep canyon, which gives birth to a majestic-looking tree. This tree not only has some weird tentacles hanging from its branches but also a purple orb with eyes on it. Just then, the spirit of a boy named Yuzu enters the tree and starts wondering about its surroundings. Taking a look at himself, Yuzu realizes he is in the forest and recalls how he was choking on water in his previous life. Now reincarnated as a freaking tree, Yuzu can boast about having the biggest wood of all time. However, the downside is that he doesn't have hands and can't lift 500 pounds with one arm like an average Andrew Tate fan. As he wonders what he did wrong, he soon realizes that trees aren't supposed to have eyes, but he can still see all around. He then realizes that he is in a canyon that goes as deep as 100 meters, making him feel trapped between two mountains. He also has a sense of smell, but among those 50 tentacles hanging from his branches, he can only move one of them. Soon after, he hears some monsters howling and realizes he won't be able to fight back with just one arm. It then hits him that a woodpecker might be his ultimate nemesis who can peck his wood dry. When he notices an airplane in the sky, he realizes he was reincarnated into the same era as his previous life. When he hears buzzing from some bees, he uses his only working branch to slice them into two, which shows him a pop-up on a screen. The pop-up tells him that he can get 0.1 evolution points by absorbing sunlight every day, and executing animals on top of that will grant him additional points. Realizing he can only power up branches at this point, he uses his 0.2 ovulation points to level them up. Soon after, he gains enough points to be able to use multiple branches, which work exactly like human arms, only more deadly. When another buzzing bee disturbs his peace, he smacks the shit out of the beehive and ends their misery. Half a month later, Yuzu is able to use all of his arms, so he twirls them into one and tries shattering a rock. Despite missing the target, the force from his arm is so strong that he still manages to break it, just by the impact from the air around it. In merely 15 days, Yuzu had grown much larger in size, and even his roots are able to absorb more energy from the ground. At this point, Yuzu believes he will become stronger, even if he sits on his ass like a dicord mod and do nothing. Yuzu also mentions how he has 20 years of longevity, which means he won't get sick and tired at all. With everything working in his favor, Yuzu aims to become the greatest tree in the world, which is actually as dull as it sounds. The next day, Yuzu is delighted as he doesn't have to go to school, study, or work. Just then, he hears some baby falcons chirping and realizes their nest must have fallen onto his branches when he cleared some way for sunlight. He then analyzes the adult falcon, which is around 50 centimeters in size and can dive up to 360 kilometers per hour, three times the speed of a cheetah. Since he lacks the ability to fight in the air, Yuzu decides to tame these baby falcons so he can be the god of both the earth and the sky. This world he is in is full of mutated air, different from the one in his previous life. This is why Yuzu wants to do his best to survive in this world, which is full of tempest wolves, large-sized ants, spider queen giant apes, serpent lords, and whatnot. Sometime later, Yuzu hunts a rabbit and feeds it to the baby falcons, who devour it instantly. He then gets another evolution point, which he uses to strengthen his last remaining arm. With all 50 of his arms leveled up, the next thing Yuzu needs to do is strengthen the tree root and lastly the trunk. He then realizes that while his arms took 0.1 points to level up, his roots require 10 times more, which means they must be super important. After he levels one of the roots up, he feels immense pain in his entire body, followed by the emergence of a red root. Thinking he is strong enough to move around, he tries pulling his other roots out, only to feel that immense pain yet again. He realizes he cannot move freely until he levels up all of his roots, and the red one that he can freely move around is his strongest weapon, which is why he decides to hide it underground. Just then, he notices some rumbling in the bushes and prepares himself for battle. As he looks at the bushes, he finds a fox that appears to be dying of poison. He cannot execute it in this state, as the falcons would be poisoned by its meat so he wants to try and cure it first. Just then, he learns that his hands have the ability to heal wounds and cure ailments at the cost of their functionality stopping indefinitely. Wanting to hit two birds with one stone, sacrifices one of his arms to cure the fox. Just as the fox gets back up, Yuzu tries to execute it, only for the fox to fall in love with him. 
Despite Yuzio wanting to yeet it out for some evolution points, he can't help but succumb to how adorable this little fella is. As he starts playing with the fox, it glows bright and goes through an evolution, which turns it into a mutant red fox. The fox not only grows in size but also has hair that looks like fire. After checking the stats, Yuzio realizes he's only five levels higher than the fox, which tells her that the essence of life from his branches not only heals the wounded but also speeds up their evolution. With a better understanding of how his world works, Yuzio hopes to max out his levels and become the most overpowered tree in the whole world. Turning his eyes back towards the fox, Yuzio wonders if it came here running from humans. Yuzio is now scared for his life because if the humans were to find him, they would think he's a dryad and cut into pieces. He wants to keep a low profile until he's stronger because, at the end of the day, he is no match for guns and missiles. Just then, he notices hustling in the bushes, and out comes two girls with a fruit basket who are probably on a picnic. He immediately goes into stealth mode, but soon realizes that the girls have come to visit their father who was buried under Yuzio. After praying, the girls go to a nearby pond for a bath, giving Yuzio a wooden wood. However, Yuzio doesn't have a clear line of sight to the pond because a tree is blocking his way, which is why he tries to move his position slightly. However, as soon as he lifts his roots, he feels immense pain throughout his body and starts crying due to lack of action. Sometime later, the girls finish their bath and leave for their homes, but not before telling their father that they will be back soon. And just like that, one week passed, and Yuzio realized that the seemingly peaceful canyon had lots of dangers looming around. One day, a fully grown eagle attacks the nest, but the fox and now grown-up falcons team up to try and defeat it. However, when the eagle proves too strong for them, Yuzio uses his arms to descend it flying. Since he defeated a level 7 enemy, Yuzio receives 70 evolution points and praises his army of falcons and the fox for their help. He mentions how the eagle was eyeing him for days due to his aura and decides to conceal it to avoid predators. A level 7 eagle was enough to almost wipe his entire army out, which means many creatures in the canyon can eliminate him, prompting him to become stronger. Not just him, but his pets also need to level up if they want to have a chance at survival. Eight of his falcons have reached level 3, while the red fox is at level 4, and Yuzu is excited to see how they will look after their next evolution. As he is feeding life essence to his squad, an explosion happens in the canyon, which causes many of his roots and branches to be cut off. As the dust settles, Yuzu looks around to see a giant serpent lord who decides he wants to have wood for breakfast. With only 24 branches left, Yuzu is stunned as he did not see the serpent coming at all, and pulls up its attributes to realize it is a level 9 monster who can perfectly hide its aura. As the serpent pulls Yuzu's upper body out of the ground, he asks his pets to stay behind him and uses two more evolution points to strengthen the roots. With three roots able to move freely, Yuzu manages to restrain the snake and then proceeds to level up all of his roots. Aiming for the belly of the serpent, Yuzu attacks it with all his might, but it ends up leaving only a small crack. Realizing his position, Yuzu starts pissing his roots but sums up the courage to attack Yuzu's head. However, the snake simply gets distracted by something else and decides to leave. Yuzu is relieved to live for another day, but is also frustrated at the condition of his body and his weaker state. Just then, he gets a pop-up to use 10 evolution points to evolve to the next rank. As he accepts the evolution, a bright light surrounds his body, and all the cuts of branches grow back along with a larger body. His fox grows up to level 7, and the falcons level up to level 5, meaning his creatures will get stronger with him. Yuzu then sends all eight of his falcons to scout the area and look for the snake. The falcons then fly at bullet speed, leaving him shocked and wondering if they can pierce through the snake's armor. After they leave, he notices how the fox has also grown in size and is even prettier than before. Just then, he hears calls for help, and the girls who visited him earlier come running out of the forest. These girls were probably playing Jumanji because they have brought the whole freaking forest with them. The girls can't understand why the animals are following them when in reality, they were all lured by the light Yuzu produced when he went through an evolution. Switching to his battle mode, Yuzu is ready to fight them but does not get a chance because his fox and the falcons defeat most of the monsters by themselves. The remaining monsters are too scared to take another step, so Yuzu asks them to back off so he can show his powers and get some wood riding from the ladies. He then brings all of his sausages out and destroys every single animal in the vicinity, leaving the girls with their mouths wide open. After laying a rampage on all those animals like a maniac, 
Yuzio gains a lot of evolution points, but a mutated cow somehow runs past his defense and strikes him. He realizes it possesses the ability to block attacks, which gives him the idea that he can spare stronger beings and nurture them for his own cause. After restraining some animals that look strong, he eliminates the rest and then wonders what to do with the ladies. If he lets them go, his secret will be uncovered, but if he executes them, he will become a demon tree that consumes people. Once villagers take note of the two missing girls, they will come looking for them and eventually find him here. Worst case scenario is that he'll be brought to the zoo where he will be ridiculed by kids for being the ugliest tree known to mankind. Just then, the girls wake up, and Yuzu decides to write using his branches, and tells the girls that he is in fact the spirit of their father reincarnated into the tree. However, the girls give him a stern look, making him realize that even though they look like it, they are not complete idiots. To confirm his identity, one of the girls asks him to share something personal about her, and he learns that their names are Ling and King using his appraisal skills. When he writes that Ling likes the neighbor's kid Ernu, she goes full crazy mode and reveals she only told this secret to her father. While the girls contemplate if Yuzu is really their father, he unknowingly creates a pair of hairpins from his branches and gives them to the girls. He then realizes that since their original father is buried in his roots, his soul might have been merged with him, which is why he feels sentimental toward them. Two months after Yuzu's reincarnation, he recalls everything that happened so far, from a group of crows destroying an airplane to a big shadow in the sea that devoured a whole cruise. Later, Ling reveals that according to the news reports, the air in this world is mutated, which causes the animals to evolve and grow stronger than usual. She thought that this magical power, which the news always reported, was fake. But now that she's seen it herself, she has started to believe in it. As she walks towards a cage of wolves to feed them, they start barking at her aggressively, until Yuzu's wolf, which she names Xiaohong, shows up like a mega simp and disciplines them. Yuzu can't help but praise Ling's guts for approaching the wolves, and then turns his attention towards the other animals he caught, the white crane and the monkey, who are so dangerous that he has to tie them up at all times. The cow, on the other hand, knows it can't defeat him, so it has given up being aggressive and now serves as a sleeping pillow for King. However, there is one troublesome animal bald head that hasn't gone quite one bit. Yuzu then checks on his stats and realizes he can now upgrade both his branches and his roots. He's achieved level 1 rank, also has 149 evolution points, and has gained two new abilities which are a defense fog and a hallucinogenic branches. Using 20 evolution points, Yuzu activates these abilities and creates a goal to defeat the great snake that almost ate him alive last time. However, he needs to clear the surrounding area of all major threats so he can take the snake on one-on-one. -on -one. As the fog deploys, the visibility drops to zero, and the girls who are right next to Yuzu can't see him properly. As the night falls, Yuzu asks Xiao Hong to escort the girls down the mountain and requests them not to tell anyone about his existence or he will be chopped down for experiments. As the girls ride Xiao Hong back home, they can't believe how they went from being chased by monsters, to meeting their father, to flying around riding a wolf. Meanwhile, Yuzu decides it's time for the second evolution, and uses 50 points for branches and 45 points for roots. He then uses 10 points to upgrade the fog and 45 more points to upgrade the hallucinogenic branches. Once he completes the evolution, anything within a 10-kilometer radius is terrified of his aura as they feel the rise of a new tyrant in the canyon. Just then, the wolves inside the cage are terrified by the illusion of a giant wolf, making him realize that maxing the fog with the hallucinogen makes illusions for anyone who is hostile towards him. After all the upgrades, Yuzu is left with only 14 points, which is not enough to upgrade his life essence skill. Additionally, his roots have reached 100 meters deep into the ground, where they are submerging in a river, which has an unknown structure. Just as Yuzu puts his attacking roots underground, one of his falcons returns and reveals that they have found no trace of the serpent. Turns out, Yuzu did more damage to him than he additionally thought, and is completely certain that it will come back for him again. The next day, the wolves start roaring again, prompting Yuzu to beat them up. Just then, King and Ling show up and scold him for hurting animals. Ling is so fearless she just walks into the cage and puts band-aids on them, which actually makes the wolves calm down. Just then, he notices that the bald head has escaped and is trying to steal King's beef jerky. After Yuzu ties him up again, King shares her meal with the cute little thing, prompting him to give her a pair of his mutts. 
Just then, Yuzi realizes that his fake daughters are soft-hearted and have calmed every animal with their kindness. Seeing them like this, Yuzi recalls how he has been on alert all the time but can finally relax now. However, unbeknownst to him, something sinister is watching him from the shadows. A few days later, as the girls get up early and rush towards the mountain, their grandpa tells them to be safe. After they leave, he says he hasn't seen them this happy ever since their father passed away but wonders why they always go to the mountain. Meanwhile, Yuzio has caught a cold, which makes absolutely no sense, but he's a freaking tree so logic doesn't apply here. Meanwhile, Xiao Hong comes down the mountain to pick the girls up who are delighted to see him. Just then, King reveals she brought some of their granddad's fertilizer, which will help their so-called father grow even stronger. Just then, they look at the sky to see the overcast weather, but are shot to the giant snake appear out of nowhere. While the snake attacks them, Yuzio is completely unaware of their situation and continues to hunt smaller animals for more evolution points. He has also feds his falcons with life essence, who are now up to level 7 of the beginner rank. Next up, he decides to spend a whopping 100 points to upgrade one of his roots, which once again comes with the no pain no gain moto. This time the upgraded root grows into a dark color, giving Yuzu at least a thousand riz points. Every one of his pets is scared to death upon seeing his new powers, and Yuzu wonders what this new root is capable of. Upon testing, he realizes he can turn the whole canyon into a living hell, simply with one level one root and gain points a lot quicker. Yuzu then forms protection circles around his vicinity using this newly upgraded root, which will allow him to sense anyone that nears his position. While the bald head continues to be a pain the monkey has learned some manners which is why he was released from captivation. Yuzu wonders why Xiao Hong hasn't returned with the sisters, but little does he know the snake has got to them. Since it is getting dark, he sends his falcons to look for them. But before they can leave, Xiao Hong arrives all beaten and on the verge of death. Yuzu is shocked and quickly uses life as sense to heal him, wondering why he has come alone this time. Just then, he looks above the canyon and sees the snake holding King's body with its teeth. King is covered in blood, and the snake is about to make a quick desert out of her. However, Yuzu taps into his daddy instincts and uses his black roots to smack the snake away. As he grabs King's seemingly lifeless body, the war axe snake, despite his upgrades, realizes it is no match for Yuzu and retreats yet again. Meanwhile, Yuzu is left with a blood-covered King who does not wake up even after being poured several times with life essence. Not wanting to accept reality, Yuzu continues to pour all of his life essence into King until he uses up all of his evolution points. However, no matter how hard he tries, he cannot heal what is already dead leaving both him and the animals she cared for devastated. On the other hand, a severely injured Ling has been brought to the hospital, but the doctor reveals that the poison has reached her heart, and even if she survives, she will be disabled for the rest of her life. Meanwhile, the scouting team arrives and reveals that they were unable to find King, claiming that she might have been eaten by the beasts. One of Yuzu's falcons is seeing this from the window and returns to the forest to inform him about Ling's condition. Yuzu is furious beyond explanation and releases all of his tamed animals to hunt down the war axe snake. Meanwhile, the humans discuss the Peng Lake, where 17 planes and 20 ships have been destroyed within the past six months. The air houses a group of mutated crows that destroy planes, while the sea has many mutated sea monsters that have been devouring ships. Due to these incidents, Peng Lake has become a dead zone. The officers discuss how they have detected very high energy signatures in the area which have even crossed the threshold of 5,000 points. A mere 1,000 energy is equivalent to a military soldier with firearms, but a creature that crosses the 5,000 point mark cannot be harmed with bullets and other normal weapons. Upon inspection, the man is shocked to see that there are eight places where such creatures are residing. Just then, the whole room turns red with a warning sign, revealing that a creature with 18,000 spiritual points has emerged. The old man most like pisses his pants, declaring that this is the end of the world. Meanwhile, the war axe snake is roaming around in the forest hunting everything like he owns the place, and even Yuzu's pets are no match for him. One by one, he defeats all of Yuzu's creatures, until all that's left standing is a level 8 Tile Hong. The first time they fought was a pure prey and predator situation. The second time he and Yuzu managed to send the stack packing, and the third time Tile Hong was protecting the sisters. However, since he was super close to the sisters, 
Teo Hong is now filler with rage and pure hatred for the snake and will do everything in his power to defeat it. Seeing his resolve, the snake is intimidated and realizes he must defeat the fox before it grows stronger and becomes a threat to his reign. The war axe snake had built an impenetrable body, a sharp fang able to cut anything in a tail that not only served as an axe, but also let him poison his prey. Currently, the snake is way stronger than the wolf, but the one thing it lacks is Teo Hong's ruthless aggression. Just then, Yu Xiu's army of falcons arrive like white knights to defend the fox, and the bullet speed flight is fast enough for them to penetrate the snake's skin. You see when two objects rub against each other, they produce heat which damages both objects. Similarly, when the falcons fly in the air at bullet speed, it produces a huge amount of friction between between them and the air. This is enough to burn their bodies, but their desire to slay the snake is so high that they would rather sacrifice their own lives to take his. When these falcons were babies, their mother who went to bring food was eaten by wolves. They waited for days and were on the verge of dying when their nest fell onto Yuzu by sheer luck. Because Yuzu fed them every day after that, they thought of him as their parent and started to make sense of their lives. But now that they've seen Sting die at the hands of the war axe snake, they are willing to risk their own lives so they can avenge her. One by one, the falcons take deep dives into the snake's flesh and damage their bodies more and more with each strike. Eventually, after getting handed to him, the snake tries to hightail out of there, only to walk directly in the wrong way of Yuzu. The first time it attacked Yuzu, it caught him by surprise and became a level 9 after absorbing his branches. The second time he attacked, he was lured by Yuzu coming from King and Ling. But when he realized he is no match for him, he ran away again. The snake never thought Yuzu would work with other creatures to lure him into his wrong game. But now that he's walking into it, there is no running away this time. When the dust settled, Yuzu had torn the snake's body into several pieces and gained 90 evolution points as a reward. Even after its death, Yuzu is not finished and beats the out of him while this creature is watching sorrow. After ripping him to shreds, Yuzu loses control of his mind and laughs like a maniac after finally realizing that he has defeated the war axe snake. He says he is not wrong for defeating it, neither was it wrong for hurting King and Ling. According to him, this world is only fit for the stronger beings, so the weak ones will naturally perish. Despite knowing all of that, Yuzu can't hold back his tears, and not only that, but his whole remaining squad starts mourning King's death. At night, Xiao Hong arrives at the village and secretly leaves King's body outside so people can give her a proper burial. As he watches from the shadows, he recalls how Yuzu thanked everyone for their help and restored them back to good health using his life essence. This causes the wild cow and the tempest wolf to go through an evolution. Yuzu realizes that the cow, even at level 3, has both life force talent and a special ability, which not even the red fox possesses. This makes him realize if he keeps nurturing the cow, it will eventually become a force to be reckoned with. On the other hand, the four wolves have awakened the wind attribute, which can allow them to be airbenders. Yuzu realizes that controlling elements in this world is quite common since he himself is controlling an element by creating fog. Meanwhile, as he notices that the bald head and the monkey have only increased one level, all of his creatures bow down to him, making him realize that they will stick with him till the very end. Seeing this makes Yuzu very emotional, and he promises to protect them with all of his strength. After some time, things start getting back to normal. The Falcons are doing sky patrol, wolves on surveying the ground, the others are cleaning the battlefield, and lastly, the wolf is serving as a guardian. Just then, Yuzu realizes that the bald head is slacking and scolds him to join others. Just then, he notices a bubble of light on top of him, and he is shocked to see Ting appearing inside it in a goldish form. Just then, he learns that his tree branches have the capability to nourish the soul. As King wakes up in her spiritual form, she is unaware of her surroundings and has no recollection of who Yuzu is making him realize that she is a revenant left in the world. She tells her her name and reveals that she is a very important person to him, which is why he will do everything he can to protect her. While Yuzu is talking to King's spirit, Baldhead is confused because he can't see her and thinks Yuzu is talking to him. Just then, King hears lots of noises in her head and sees a glimpse of people surrounding her sister. She suddenly feels extreme sorrow in her mind and does not understand what is happening to her. Yuzu realizes that since Ling's soul never appeared, that means she must be alive. This also means King's soul has merged with her sisters because they were born twins. He also notices how King's soul is highly unstable 
and tries using life essence on her. This helps King calm down, who then helps Yu Ziyu see through her consciousness. Yu Ziyu is taken to the village hospital where Ling is lying unconscious, making him realize that he can now connect with her soul and see what she sees. Just then, King realizes that she has the ability to move Ling's body, but doing so is so exhausting that they are taken back to the canyon. Just then, Yu Ziyu realizes that King might be able to live inside Ling's body, like two souls in one. Meanwhile, the officer who detected an extremely powerful spiritual signature in his lab has finally found the canyon and aims to eliminate the source, aka Yu Ziyu. When it starts to rain heavily, the officer decides to check in on the nearby village, but one of his men says he will have to handle the commanding this time around. This man is Gao Yan, a super being who has awakened his spiritual powers and is among the first generation of such humans. Meanwhile, King shows Yu Ziyu how she has awakened a talent that usually takes 10 days. Yu Ziyu then asks if she has seen or heard anything since that day, but King has no information to share. Since the sisters were attacked on the mountain, there is a high chance that the villagers will come looking for the cause. Yu Ziyu, with his current powers, can handle some cannons and a group of villagers but has no intention of exposing himself to the world. This is why he uses level 2 fog to cover a much larger area with visibility even less than 4 meters. With the whole canyon covered in his thick fog, Yuzu decides to name it the Fog Country with him serving as its ruler. Just as it starts to rain, King notices a strange spiritual energy, making Yuzu realize that someone is entering in his domain and is heading directly towards him. This someone is the group of military officers and a super being who is out to hunt him. As they arrive at the canyon, the leader asks some of them to stay behind and guard their jeeps while the others bring their super-secret weapons along. When the soldiers protest that those weapons are quite heavy, he claims they are the trump cards to use against the beasts. Just then, they hear crying coming from the village, and Gao Yan decides to check it by himself. Jumping around the mountains with bullet speed, Gao Yan makes his way to the village and surprises every NPC loser in his squad. Meanwhile, Yu Ziyu can sense how the people who came this way aren't normal and wonders why they came here in the first place. He asks King if the villagers hired someone to search the forest, but King can't tap into Ling's body as she is having a hard time merging with her. This gives Yu Ziyu an idea, so he asks King to swallow more of his <laughs> Meanwhile, Gao Dian has finally made it to the hospital and is menacingly watching over Ling, while his grandpa wonders if she can really be saved. Gao Yan explains how every person has a different level of spiritual energy, and while some people sleep at night and wake up the next day, others take three days to awaken. She then notices how Ling's surrounding particles are of a rare fire element, and then pulls out a spiritual potion from his coat. This potion can extract energy from the air and give it back to the user. As he pours it into Ling's mouth, King feels a surge of energy flowing into her followed by her emitting a bright beam of light. Just then, Ling wakes up from her coma. While everyone is relieved to see her in good health, Gao Yan finds it quite strange as he did not expect her to wake up so soon. Turns out it is actually King who is now in control of Ling's body but she still has to get used to it. In the meantime, Yu Ziyu asks her to get comfortable with her body and extract information from her surroundings. At night, a huge party is thrown for Officer Hong and his men for saving the old man's granddaughter. King on the other hand is receiving instructions from Yu Ziyu and asks the men why they came here in the first place. Gao Dian says they've come to investigate mutated beasts roaming in the mountains, but King says she never encountered anything like that when she was attacked. Gao Yan says they got their info from the satellite, and Yu Ziyu is shocked to see that humans have adapted so fast. When King asks further questions, Gao Dian explains that the satellite cannot accurately show the change in the spiritual energy, which is why they will need to evacuate the village and thoroughly search the area. This makes Yu Ziyu realize his presence is still unknown and decides not to show his powers to avoid detection. However, on the off chance that the humans discover him, Yu Ziyu is more than ready to fight them off. The next day, Gao Dian asks the granddad if he can take King with her, and even though he wants to say no, he agrees on the condition that they take her to a doctor to recover her memory. Promising to hire the best doctor, Gao Yan takes his squad to the mountains and arrives at the canyon, which is covered in Yu Ziyu's thick fog. However, due to having zero visibility, the squad runs circles around the area for two hours without making any progress. Just then, the officers wonder if the huge spike in spiritual power is due to this thick fog, but Gelian senses something wrong as it's way too convenient. This is why 
Gagyan urges them to keep pushing and finally takes his squad out of Yuzhiu's trap further down the mountain. Just then, they hear a wolf's howling, and Hong asks the men to ready their weapons. All of a sudden, a wolf appears out of the thick fog and quickly grabs Hong before anyone can react to its presence. The men start shooting at the wolf, carefully avoiding hitting their captain's body, only for the bullets to bounce back at them. Before the wolf makes its escape, Gao Yan uses his quick speed to knock Hong out of its mouth, but loses track of the wolf. Just then, an angry bald head appears out of nowhere and tears through their ranks as bullets and bombs have no effect on it. Just then, Hong reminds his men to use armor-piercing bullets, which send the bald head flying. However, when the dust settles, not only is the bald head completely fine, but it now has backup as all four of Yuzio's wolves have joined the battle. With a handful of soldiers remaining, the red fox joins the battle as well, and an injured Gaudian asks the men to step aside as he must get everyone out of here. After some time, Gaudian, after hitting bald head with two piercing bullets, manages to free the remaining of his men from Yuzio's trap and takes them to safety. While Yuzu is relieved that his identity is still hidden, he knows these persistent bastards will come again and needs to become stronger. He also has an informant in the form King, who reveals she is in a car with the other team. She reveals how she's been carried to the mystery sector after Ling awakens her spiritual powers, and Yuzu sees this as the perfect opportunity to invade the human race from within. As the young drivers drool over her beauty, Ting, who has been in this body for 15 hours, finally stops controlling it as she has to rest as well. Yuzhi promises to give her regular doses of life essence, which not only nourishes her soul but also speeds up her evolution. Just then, the squad of wolves arrives carrying a nearly dead bald head who seems to have given the hardest time to Gaudian. If Yuzhi were to give him the essence of life in this state, he would just explode and die. This is why he uses his roots to dig a pathway and create a pond for them so they can have a diluted version of his whenever necessary. Meanwhile, Gaudian returns to the research institute and gives him a brief on the situation. Their headmaster tells him to put the canyon under the yellow warning category for now and move it to the red zone as soon as they notice an anomaly there. Before Gaudian leaves, the headmaster asks if he's brought a girl with him, and he replies that he's found the strongest fire element of this generation. The green zone is an area with no mutated monsters, a place where humans reside in high numbers. A yellow is the one where there is minimal mutant presence, but humans still need to be on guard all the time. The red zone is the most dangerous area with a high concentration of mutated beasts, a place where it's nearly impossible for humans to create settlements. And lastly, they have the Bermuda Triangle, a place where all life is prohibited. Yuzio got super lucky this time because the majority of the planet, except of human cities, is covered in a yellow zone, meaning no one will bother him unless he causes a lot of commotion. Meanwhile, the bald head, who has upgraded to level 6, is doing a sparing match against the red fox, who is at the peak of level 8. As their duel begins, Xiao Hong destroys him within seconds, and Yu Ziyu holds him back, so he doesn't get himself beaten to death by the fox. As Yu Ziyu mentions how things have been peaceful ever since the last attack, his wolves arrive with a pig and a rat, which he consumes for more evolution points. He realizes how good of an idea it is to tame these beasts as they not only defend him but also help in hunting. As he asks them to eat, he notices how the red fox won't join them as he thinks he's too cool for these pathetic weaklings. Yuzu then uses 125 points to upgrade half of his branches, which gives him brand new abilities of paralysis and stun. Just then, he notices the bald head picking a fight with the cow and paralyzes him in one hit. However, when the bald head springs back up instantly, King explains that honey badgers have a natural immunity to toxins. She then reveals how she has been a sitting duck for the past few days, but Gaudian has promised to take her to the institute the coming day where she will have to pass an exam to enter. Since King awakened her talent at the same time Ling awakened her fire element, Yuzu knows she will become an unstoppable force in the future and promises to spoil her with his <laughs> she passes. As the sun rises on the next day, Ting is more than ready to take the test and enter the institute. As she enters the lift, Gao Yan explains that their institute specializes in the study of spiritual powers. Many people who have awakened these powers are gathered here today, and their institute not only studies them but also finds ways to cultivate supernatural humans. King is shocked to see an underground city underneath the institute that is built for academic purposes. Many people like Ting have gathered here today, and as soon as she exits a lift, she is met with many staggering eyes. 
Just then, the director shows up and mentions how humans need to evolve to make sure they survive in this fast-changing world. He claims that humans will once again be the alpha species of this planet. But for that to happen, the students gathered here must work hard and become strong, so they can lead the newer generation to a bright future. Just then, a man with a funny-looking mustache and a mohawk shows up and begins the first test, which involves students placing their hands on a screen that evaluates their spiritual powers. Unexpectedly, the power levels of the second generation are quite low, until a chick named Ling Ling shows up and crosses the 2,000-point barrier, much to the conductor's shock. Not only does Ling Ling have two raw talents, but her score is higher than all of the first-generation superhumans. As the last student, Ting is called for assessment. The conductor can't help but focus on Ling Ling, who he thinks is the hope for humanity. The director asks Gao Yan if King will be able to match Ling Ling's score, and Gao Yan tells him never to underestimate fire elementals. As King places her hand on the screen, the conductor is blown to bits upon seeing that her score is going as high as 5,000. However, it does not stop there. In fact, her scores are so high that the machine blows up, leaving everyone, including the director, in shock. After absorbing the absurdity of this situation, the conductor moves on to the second round of the aptitude test. In this test, students have to face Gao Yan in a handicapped battle, and they will pass if they manage to lay a hand on him even once. However, after several attempts, no student including Ling Ling and King is able to go near him. With only 10 minutes left on the clock, Gao Yan keeps provoking Ling Ling and King to work harder, or they will be eliminated before they can even start. Hearing this, King charges up her fire elemental powers, which are strong enough to intimidate Ling Ling. Using flame to increase her speed, she charges the senior down, who barely dodges her attack. King then starts moving at absurd speeds, making him realize that she in on a junior on paper. As she continues to rush him down, he barely dodges her attack, and it seems as if she will hit him eventually. However, Ling Ling is driven by jealousy and unexpected kicks, King to the ground. She then catches Gao Yan off guard and manages to touch him, which leads to her passing the test. As he runs to check up on King in hopes of getting some action, he finds Ting extremely pissed at Ling Ling. As she makes fun of King for letting her guard down, Ting recalls how Yu Ziu told her to get rid of anyone who gets in her way, prompting her to slam that down the mat. Ling Ling realizes she is no match for King and begs her to let her go. However, King is helping on taking her life, only for Gao Dian to restrain her and pass her based on sheer strength. Ting immediately wears a polite smile on her face, making Gao Dian realize that she is a maniac. Meanwhile, the director is getting some rise in his old bone and wishes to cultivate Ting. Later, Yu Ziyu learns that King is now a well-known genius who is deemed strong enough to enter the 8th class. On the other hand, the villagers have been evacuated for their own sake, and they will now live safely in the mountains. As time passed, the winter arrived and Yu Ziyu continued to evolve his branches in the meantime. Things might seem peaceful, but unbeknownst to everyone, a rare mutant with the grade of extraordinary first order has appeared in the canyon. Meanwhile, in the northwest, the military has been working hard and slaying several mutants until they finally arrive at a place filled with spiritual stones. However, before they can celebrate, a silver centipede that looks more like a spiky sausage shows up to hit their <laughs> Back in the canyon, Yu Ziyu has upgraded all of his branches and will soon reach the peak of the First Order. Additionally, he only has eight roots left to upgrade, which will drive him to the Second Extraordinary Order. Yu Ziyu is confident that not even a nuclear weapon can hurt him once he reaches that level, but it will come at the cost of humans discovering his existence. As he's lost in thought, King shows up and informs him about a big problem. Turns out, all the members of the Northwest Squad have been eliminated all thanks to the beasts that were attracted by the leakage in the spiritual stone mine. The main culprit for this situation is the Silver Centipede, an extraordinary second-order beast with 120,000 spiritual power. However, the humans have sent Suicide Squad ripoffs to deal with the situation. <laughs> Yuzu is shocked to learn that humans have found spiritual stone ores, and according to Tain, more than 10 institutions are at each other's throats to control them. These stones possess special magical powers that can speed up the upgrade of body strength. These stones will help the human race catch up with the evolution of extraordinary creatures if they stop being a <laughs> Yuzu is not too excited to hear about this, because this ruins his plans of being an invincible monster. 
King also mentions the Silver Centipede who has wiped out all of the Northwest forces and released that the superhumans have been sent to deal with the situation. Yuzi you wonder how the Centipede managed to reach the extraordinary Second Order without ever letting its presence known, making him wonder if it has an ability to hide its power. The humans are unprepared as they have never witnessed a Second Order monster before making Yuzi you wonder if he can find it. She tells him that according to the human calculators, the Centipede has a power level of 120,000 whereas his power level is only 16,000, which is pretty much self-explanatory. With that, he asked her to go back and let him know if anything interesting comes up. Just then, the Falcons arrive, capturing a freaking ant queen, which pisses him off as the whole ant colony is following them. Gracefully accepting his prey, Yuzi chops them down one by one and by the time he is finished, he has 882 evolution points. He then uses these points to upgrade his roads which naturally come with a lot of pain. Meanwhile, on the other side of the forest, the bald head is extremely injured and is crawling his way back to the tree. Turns out the bald head was happily returning after catching a fish when he saw a bunch of squirrels looking at him like they hadn't eaten in days. From the kindness of his heart, he decided to share his fish with the squirrels and even became friends with them. However, a giant turtle appeared, crushed the squirrels, and kicked the bald head. Luckily, the Tempest Wolves find him and bring him back to Yuzu, who dips him into the Essence of Life pond to heal him. Yuzu then sends the Red Fox and the Wolves to find and eliminate the one who did this to the Bald Head. A creature strong enough to hide in his thick fog and beat the Bald Head so badly can become a threat to Yuzu as well, which is why King decides to join the hunt. She also informs him that Ling Shi might have the ability to cut off spiritual power, which explains why the Silver Centipede got so strong without anyone noticing it. He also realizes that the river we need his roots had a magical power that must have come from a spirit stone mine. This means that the turtle who defeated the bald head has used the stones to become much stronger, and if the fox and the wolves go out alone, they will most certainly die. This also means that the turtle has the ability to sneak past him, so he decides to divide his team into three groups to survey the area better. The fox and the wolves would go together and look for him in the place bald head was found. The Falcons and the White Crane are sent to survey the area from the air. And lastly, Yuzu digs down with his roots and makes way for King to locate their opponent in the underground mine. He strictly tells his subordinates to not engage with the enemy and report back as soon as they find him. And with that, all three teams are dispatched, and King is surprised to see that the underground hole is filled with Yuzu's roots. As she decides to follow the river, the wolves and the red fox come across a giant crack in the mountain. Meanwhile, King finds a huge mine of spirit stones, just as Yuzu suspected. She then hears a loud roar whose pressure is even stronger than that of Yuzu. Going further, she finds the African giant tortoise resting in its shell and wonders if he is the one who kicked Bald Head's bald ass. She is glad that they discovered him sooner because if they were to let him alone, who knows how strong it would become. Ting also finds a blood herb, a plant that grows on the magical stone ore. Sensing that the turtle is guarding it with his life, she suspects that this herb would be of great use to use you. As she tries to sneak around the turtle, the beast wakes up and is pissed off at her. On the surface, Yuzu feels its presence and looks around to see that the ball head has disappeared. The turtle then attacks King, and the impact is so strong that it is felt throughout the mountains. She decides to lure the turtle towards Yuzu, but once she makes some distance, the turtle goes back to defending the herb. As she contemplates what to do in this situation, Something goes past him at bullet speed and attacks the turtle. This turns out to be the bald head who is out for revenge for his earlier defeat and the merciless execution of his squirrel friends. King reminds him that he is only level 6 and is no match for a transcendent rank 1, but the honey badger is so furious that he does not care anymore. With high speeds, bald head manages to land a few hits on the turtle, but in the end, the difference in their strength catches up and he gets his ass kicked. Even on the verge of death, he can only think about his cute little friends and is determined to fight for them. Honey badgers are carnivorous animals that usually reside in Africa and South Asia. With their thick skin, broad head, and strong paws, honey badgers can be a vengeful species. Back in the cave, the bald head goes super sunny and as his hair starts to change color, making King realize that he is going through a mutation. With this new power, the bald head is even faster than before and knocks the wind out of the turtle's mouth, leaving King shocked. Since the turtle is big and heavy, it cannot keep up with quick attacks which are slowly building up the damage. Eventually, the bald head lands a devastating blow that knocks the big old turtle out, 
and as King cheers for their victory, the turtle gets back on its feet and sends the bald head flying. Despite going through a mutation, the little bastard is no match for him and continues to get his ass beat. However, as King steps in to defend her friend, the bald head is filled with immense pain for being unable to avenge her friends. He is so lost that he does not care if he lives and charges head on like a maniac. It seems as if he will meet his end here, but when he actually connects with the turtle, it sends him crashing into the wall. In reality, Yuzi Root had arrived just in time and smacked the turtle away before it could execute the honey badger. Sensing the urgency of this situation, Yuzu asks Sting to pass her consciousness on to him so he can battle the turtle by himself. As suspected, the turtle has been using the stones to upgrade its rank all while purposely hiding its powers. Yuzu restrains the bald head and praises him for holding his own against an enemy much higher rank than him, but now he can rest well as his master will take the initiative from here on out. Despite King's warning not to fight it head on, Yuzu charges it down with his roots and manages to land a devastating hit on it. Surprisingly, Yuzu is still holding back because he doesn't want to risk hurting Baldhead in the process, so he sends him flying outside the cave while Xiao Hong carefully catches him. Once they are at a safe distance, the fight between the two titans begins, and Yuzu cleverly lifts the turtle in the air, so it cannot use its sand element. With that, Yuzu easily obliterates the turtle and gains a whopping 8,000 evolution points. Since they have the cave all to themselves, Yuzu starts collecting the spirit ores while King presents him with the blood herb, which will help him level up a lot. Sometime later, Yuzu digs a whole tunnel system like he's been playing Minecraft so his animals can transport the stones above the ground. Unaware of what changes these stones will bring in his, Yuzu excitedly uses them all for evolution. Since it's cold now, normal birds fly to the south while mutated birds stay behind because they are strong enough to resist the cold. However, that is the worst decision they made because a now overpowered Yuzu is ready to devour them. This trunk color has changed and his eyes have become more fierce, but what really matters is his stats. Turns out, Yuzu was able to absorb the sand turtle and is now capable of sand control. Upon testing his new skills, he realizes why humans are so fearful of the transcend rank 2 but this destructive power that he has not only works within a few hundred meters. Since Yuzu can't pull out his roots, he is hoping to level up his sand control powers and move the ground, which will help him walk freely. While he's lost in the thought, King evaluates that Yuzu's energy might have crossed the 30,000 mark, and not even the silver centipede can harm him now. Just then, two of the falcons return to the canyon and report that they have found a suspicious target. However, Yuzu tells them that he's already taken care of the situation, and orders them to come back. Just then, the cow notices a sand flower on Yuzu's trunk and starts mooing, prompting Yuzu to feed her that flower. After consuming it, the cow is upgraded to beginner level 9, which shocks Yuzu. Just then, he notices that the cow is now able to speak, meaning it has developed consciousness. This gives Yuzu an idea to level up all of his beasts so they can become even stronger. As time passed, Yuzu expanded his underground cave while King returned to Ling's body to continue her academic journey. One day, one of the teachers invites her into the lab and shows her a new life form, which happens to be a human wolf hybrid. However, even after thousands of experiments, the hybrid is still not ready as human regeneration cells can't resist wolf's devoured cells. King feels sad about all the lost lives, but the instructor tells her that all of these humans came willingly and sacrificed their lives for the betterment of humanity. He is helped on finding a life form that has strong regenerative ability, which will help human beings go through the next evolution. Meanwhile, a Left 4 Dead squad is on their way to the canyon which consists of three super beings Kanking, Fang Tong, a muscular, normal human Suhu, and a skinny piss pants who wears nerdy glasses. As the skinny guy complains about the thick fog, Suhu tells him not to worry as they have Kanking, who on top of having two massive talents, has a special ability called female intuition. Tom explains their mission, which is to grab some spiritual herbs and slay some mutants. Just then, a level 7 mutated white tiger shows up and instantly eliminates Su. As Tom marches in like a simp, he gets impaled by the tiger's claws. Following that, the nerdy piss pants tries his luck with a pistol, only to have his entire upper half chewed off. Fang is the last fighter remaining and asks Chan King to run back and inform the army before all of them die. However, Fang falls faster than a leaving only Kanking alive. As she prepares to face death like everyone else in her group, Yuzu shows up like a white knight and restrains the tiger. 
Moments before going unconscious, she sees Black Roots clutching onto the tiger, who is then brought to the camp. Once there, Yuzu realizes his life essence has a new property that makes the consumer feel closer to him, prompting him to try it on the tiger. Doing so turns the scary monster into a cute little home cat that starts showing affection towards Yuzu. Seeing his effects, he decides to use it on Kanking to get some action. Turns out, Yuzu managed to save all three of the super beings, and Kanting is terrified to see so many mutant beasts at once. She asks her subordinates to get up and help her, but they wouldn't move a muscle even if they were free. As Yuzu brings her branch out to pour his clanking, she assumes she's going to become a protagonist. However, when she's poured with life essence, Yuzu asks her what her ability is, prompting her to reveal that she has a sixth sense. Yuzu realizes that is the most useless ability one could awaken, and asks her to train his pets. Kanking resists at first, but Yuzu soon kicks in, and she immediately becomes the submissive housewife everyone wants. After trying a few commands on her, Yuzu can't resist his sleazy urges and asks her to undress. However, when Kanking hesitates, he realizes that he does not have full control over her actions as she has a consciousness of her own. Turning his attention towards Tom and Feng, he hopes to enslave them as well so they can teach human language to the fox and the cow. He initially wanted Sting to help him with this stuff, but since King can be put to a better use, he thinks it's best to use humans for training his pets. For that purpose, he creates little hobbit holes for the humans so they can live under his watch. Following that, he turns his attention to becoming stronger and opens up his stat window to realize that he has more than 13,000 evolution points. When Yuzu broke through rank 2, he harvested 5,000 points, and eliminating the turtle on top of that gave him 8,000 more. So far, Yuzu has learned that beginner rank 1 creature gives him 10 points, whereas rank 2 gives him 20. As for transcend beings, their gain is calculated according to their spiritual energy. For example, eliminating a mutant with 80,000 energy will give him 8,000 points and so on. Using 1,000 points, Yuzu upgrades his sand control ability and realizes that he can create giant pillars of rock now. However, the Ronge is still within 100 meters, so he uses an additional 3,000 points to upgrade it again. This time, he is able to create small cliffs and even has the ability to cause earthquakes. If Yuzu were to move all of his roots, everything within a 100-meter radius would be covered in dirt. Meanwhile, in a country surrounded by the sea, a man sees giant waves coming toward the shore that flood the entire city. This brings giant mutant sharks and many fierce fishes to the land who waste no time in feeding on humans. Among these mutants is a deep rep octopus, the first transcend rank 1 mutant anyone has seen so far. Following that, a transcend rank 3 gold pattern eel shows up at the shore, and the country is basically done for. Five hours late, the president is furious because the detection team was too late to recognize the threat, which has caused the destruction of half of the city. He asks his secretary Erin to give him some info, and she reveals that the mutated beast is a snake monster that belongs to the ancestral type. Its weight is around 70,000 tons, and its spiritual energy is roughly around 170,000 at least. At the highest it can reach up to 250,000 points, which is the highest anyone has ever recorded. Erin further reveals that three nuclear warheads were fired at the eel, and after getting it with one, it retreated back to the sea. Since they can't be sure if it is still alive, the threat of death and destruction continues to loom over the humans. Meanwhile in the canyon, Yuzu has fully enslaved the humans who are busy at work. Feng is in charge of cooking, Kanking has become a language teacher, and Tong is now a sparring partner to the animals. However, let's just say they are not having the best time of their lives. After taking a break to eat food, the three of them discuss how the tree hasn't harmed them ever since they came here. They never expected a wise tree to exist so far away from their city, but they are certain that the military would try to destroy Yuzu if they were to find out about him. Meanwhile, King asks Yuzu why he made them stay, to which he responds that human knowledge is very important to him. King then explains the eel situation and Yuzu is shocked to see that humans have resorted to nuclear weapons so soon. She also reveals that the eel managed to deflect two of the three warheads only by using the pressure of its screen. Despite being hit with one, it is still alive and escaped back to the sea. However, this is bad for Yuzu, as if he were to be put in a similar situation, he would have nowhere to run. When she asks if nuclear bombs will be able to eliminate such threats, Yuzu is more worried about them developing an immunity to radiation. 
Yuzhu then reveals his plan to recruit stronger allies and create an underground empire so he can keep up with the world. Back in the sea, the eel is seen to have sustained devastating damage from the nuclear warhead and is barely alive. Back at the canyon, Yuzhu starts restraining more wild mutants and uses the red fox to intimidate them. Among these catches is a rank 6 wild boar, who may not be as high level as the fox but is a great addition to the team. Just then, he catches an alligator that turns into his ancestral type, and King explains that such monsters are the most ferocious ones among all of them. When the alligator is no longer intimidated by the red fox, they decide to battle among themselves to determine who will be the Jiga Chad of the squad. As the two prepare for battle, the rest of the animals become spectators with terror on their faces. As they exchange several blows, the whole area gets filled with smoke, and both of them develop mutual respect for each other. Yuzi realizes that this evolution is super beneficial for the team as the alligator is just as strong if not more than the red fox. The next day, Tong asks Yuzu to give him nurture, claiming that this world is only for the strongest and he can't survive here in this condition. Yuzu is wary of him as he betrayed his own kind and asks him to take his sorry ass out of her. As he leaves, Ting questions Yuzu if he will ever accept them, but he thinks he's doing them a favor by letting them live. Ting mentions that humans have gotten much stronger than before, and Yuzu says they have taken nurture for granted just like humans do. He says some people are born like that and will make a habit out of taking things from others, and when you stop giving them what they want, they won't waste a second betraying you. This is why he needs to observe them more before he can fully trust them. After some days, King tells Yuzu that the silver centipede has been caught, much to his shock. She says she plans to absorb its soul at the academy to break through rank 1, but Yuzu asks her to be careful as playing with a transcend rank 2 is something that shouldn't be taken lightly. When King says she is confident in her ability, Yuzu realizes she has become self-aware and has started to make decisions on her own. Just then, they hear an explosion nearby, which came from the bald head fighting the alligator. Ever since it's been caught, it has been suppressing its wild nature, but Baldhead seems to think he's the strongest and challenges him to bring out its true nature. With countless fighting, the Baldhead is at the peak of rank 7, the Silk Monkey has just achieved rank 7, the Swan is also at level 7, and the Falcons are all of rank 8 now. On the other hand, the Tempest Wolves are now 30 in number, and it is clear that Yuzu has expanded his army by a lot. Yuzu then realizes that he cannot keep the beasts in prison and gathers them all to reveal that anyone who has reached level 9 can go out on their own and train in the wild. The only three who fit these criteria are the red fox, the alligator, and surprisingly, the wild cow. The white tiger protests as he is level 9 as well, but Yuzu tells him he's too stupid to be left alone for now. He then decides to address the red fox by the name Nine Tails and declares him the leader. The wild cow is declared the second in command while the white tiger is given third priority. Even though the alligator is strong, he gets the fourth place because he came in late. He then gives them the title the Great Nine Beasts and gives them permission to hunt anywhere except for human cities. The wild cow expresses his wish to stay, so Yuzu lets him do what he wants. He then advises the other two to not pick a fight they can't win, and with that, the Nine Tails and the alligator lead the canyon to become stronger. Meanwhile in the institute, King is standing in front of a restrained silver centipede, whose body has been cut to restrain his powers. Since it is on the verge of dying, Ting gives him a way out by proposing a merger. While the fox and the alligator are in their own places getting stronger, everything else seems to be going just as planned in the canyon. While the wolves are busy extracting the spirit stones, the bald head is slacking as usual, earning him scolding from everyone else. On the surface, Yuzu is practicing a new technique called the willowing blade, which seems like a waste of time as it's weaker than the branch, has a lower ronge, and consumes too much energy. Yuzu then uses 2,000 points to upgrade it in hopes of making it usable, and although this makes it much better than before, it is still not worth using. Just then, he opens a panel which shows him his skills, and as it turns out, everything is level 2 except for his main trunk. When he tries to upgrade it to level 2 as well, he is shocked to learn that it requires 100,000 evolution points. He has just over 6,000 points, which are enough to upgrade the dense fog to level 3. Even though he is completely broke after this upgrade, one thing that he has attained is the power to make others hallucinate anything of his choice. Naturally, he summons a white dragon to make the humans shit their pants and wants to prank King when she returns. Speaking of whom, 
Yuzu notices a bright purple light emerge from his roof and checks to see that it is King, who is finally making a breakthrough after merging with the Silver Centipede. In the Academy, everyone gathers around to watch her go through this evolution, and the instructor sends his assistant to fetch the spirit rocks of the finest quality. While Yuzu pours his the instructor gives her the spirit rocks at the same time, which allows her to evolve successfully. The instructor is super impressed as King has managed to hit a breakthrough and has reached tranche level 1 just in the span of 6 months. Back in the canyon, King demonstrates her destructive powers to Yuzu and reveals she is capable of visualizing the silver centipede. To give her a little scare, Yuzu creates transcend level 1 beasts out of the thick fog which are capable of attacking others. However, Ting is so high level now that she can make them disappear with a snap of her fingers, revealing that hallucinations are very weak against her mental spirit type. She then reveals that not only does this not work against mutants of the same type, but it can also help Yuzu's enemies track him down, making the whole fog gig pointless. Ting then advises him to use a spirit stone, which not only strengthens the fog beasts but also lets Yuzu conceal his connect to them. At this point, Yuzu feels like a complete dumbass because King knows so much more than him and does as she advised, which produces amazing results. Elsewhere, a military force is engaging with a large number of mutant beasts, waiting for the reinforcements to arrive. When they learn that they are all on their own, a giant coral crab of transcend rank, two shows up and obliterates them all. Meanwhile, King informs Yuzu of a place where a certain item is located, so he sends one of his falcons to survey that area. The next day, the falcon meets her in her human body and receives a capsule from her, which it brings back to Yuzu. Upon opening the capsule, Yuzu finds a small ant that is on the verge of death. Just then, King shows up in her spirit form and reveals that this is a miracle ant which is produces after sacrificing millions, and the only reason she got her hands on it was because it was on the verge of death. Upon analyzing it further, Yuzu realizes the special abilities this ant has and uses a diluted life essence from the pond to heal it. After successfully getting Yuzu's all over its face, the ant turns into a mutated gold ant. At first, it starts attacking Yuzu with super high speed and decent damage, but soon pledges itself to his service. Yuzu is shocked to learn that the ant has learned telepathy at level 5, unlike the white tiger at level 9. The ant immediately takes note of the situation and starts bullying the tiger, who runs off like an angry Karen upon getting a reality check. Giving it the name Sparky, Yuzu sends it off to the mines so it can cultivate and become even stronger. Yuzu also realizes that Sparky has witnessed the death of millions of his species, which means it will grow resentment towards humans and might go out for revenge once it's strong enough. While Kanking comforts the stupid white tiger, the alligator hunts a freaking Shenron and is about to go through an evolution. However, the high spike in spiritual energy is noted by the Bureau who cap it at 24,000 points. After confirming it to be a rank 9 evolve, the hot chick at the command center sends the Air Force to get rid of it. Meanwhile, Yuzu, unaware of the predicament the alligator is in, continues pranking the humans with his fog monsters, fast that they are practically invisible to the camera. These creatures are none other than Yuzu's falcons, who tear through the entire air squad in a matter of seconds. As the command center loses all connection to the air units, King takes a sigh of relief as she is well aware of what's going on. Just then, the control center manages to capture an image that lets them know that they are dealing with peregrine falcons, capable of traveling at 390 km per hour. Goen realizes that they are on the ninth level, and their military stands no chance against this many of them. After some time, the falcons manage to free the alligator, who arrives at the base all covered in wounds. As it approaches the base, Yuzu swings his branch onto him, revealing that he was aiming for a miniature scouting plane that followed them here. The alligator then reveals that the humans used armor-piercing bullets against him, which have created holes in his body. He says these bullets cannot hurt him much and the real problem is the muscle-stiffening missile that made him immobile. Naturally, Sparky is frustrated as humans, who destroyed millions of its species, almost took the life of another friend. Following that, the alligator pulls out a gift for Yuzu, which turns out to be a snake egg. It reveals that the mother snake awakened the ice element, and even though it was unable to save it, it thought Yuzu might have a use for the egg. On top of that, the alligator also presents him with an ice spirit grass. Upon closer inspection, Yuzu senses our strong spiritual manner emitting from the egg and wonders if it will be capable of surpassing the war axe snake. 
Meanwhile, the command center manages to get some footage before their scout got destroyed. In that footage, they see a tree moving and realize that this is the same area that was investigated before. The hot lady declares it a red zone and sends some troops to monitor that area, explaining that they have to eliminate the crocodile before it's too late. After some time, the military creates a camp close to the canyon and Sparky is not too happy to see them. Meanwhile, Yuzu tells the alligator to go to the center of the Misty Mountains and create a lake of his own. When the time comes, he will give him some essence to help him create a spiritual lake. The bald head and the monkey are sad to see him go in an injured state, so he shows them that he's okay and that they will play once he returns. After it leaves, Yuzu reveals that the humans are now aware of the crocodile's presence, but since they do not know about his existence, he will try to keep a low profile. He decides to use the fog beast to hide himself and declares that no human being will ever harm him and his friends. Ting reveals that the humans have assembled a small team at the foot of the mountain, and they are preparing to enter as soon as possible. Yuzu then creates a dragon out of the fog to fight the soldiers at the foot, and even though they rain it down with bullets, the dragon regenerates and kicks their <laughs> When one of the soldiers brings out a flamethrower to fight it, he gets his <laughs> beat by Tom, who wants to prove his loyalty to Yuzu. As Sparky joins the battlefield, bullets rain all over the place and King realizes that they will no longer be able to hide themselves in the canyon. Yuzu acknowledges this as well and states that the only way to delay the inevitable is to show the humans what he and his army are capable of. As Sparky finishes off the rest of the soldiers, Yuzu states that he will go to war with humans to protect his territory. Days passed, and the rumors about the mountains started spreading among the people. In the meantime, the alligator was given 10 drops of life essence in his lake, where he chills out with his friends. Also, Yuzu has upgraded two of his branches to level 3 and is now capable of creating fingers out of these two branches. It is almost exactly like human hands, which help him grab stuff easily. It now takes 1,000 evolution points to upgrade one branch, meaning he will need a total of 50,000 to upgrade all 50 branches. After some time, he upgrades eight more branches, which increases his power level to 490,000. Later, he asks the alligator about the great river he was in and learns that it has a power that suppresses fluctuations in spiritual power. The alligator also reveals that he felt the existence of a transcendent second order and above in the river, making it one of the most dangerous places in the world. Back in the city, Officer Hong learns about what happened with the alligator and asks his men to prepare an army to raid the canyon. Realizing the threat it poses, he declares that they will burn that mountain to the ground even if it costs them their lives. Will Yuzu become strong enough to defend his territory, or will the canyon fall into the human hand? That is it for this video. Leave a thumbs up if you liked the video and subscribe to the channel for similar content. And as always, thanks for watching.